Australia is drowning. Well, to some extent it is. Strange weather events have led to massive widespread floods all throughout the eastern parts of the country, along with a much colder and wetter winter. In the past couple of months, Victoria has become absolutely inundated by rains that seemingly never stop. Some places receive flooding that surpassed historical levels, and this is all because of a few things that have been going on, with one of them being an anomaly in this case. This anomaly is the massive volcanic eruption that occurred in Tonga in January of 2022. This was the largest eruption that we have witnessed since the 1886 eruption of Krakatoa. And this eruption is directly responsible for creating and amplifying the wave of devastation that Australia has experienced in the past few weeks, as floods affected vast areas of the country, plunging much of it beneath metres worth of water, and catching many suburban areas by surprise as rivers began to swell to historical levels within only a few hours of heavy rainfall commencing. The amount of rain that was experienced was seemingly endless, week after week weather channels would predict yet another rain bomb approaching the eastern states, forcing thousands of already worn down Australians to remain on high alert. So how did the Tongan eruption contribute to the amplification of these events? Well, it's a fascinating story, and it's one worth telling. Welcome to Oz Geographics. The recent floods in Victoria were bad. Really, really bad. A flood emergency is looming with up to 100 millimetres of rain forecast to lash Victoria. We've actually broken records. 24 hour records are broken, but also we've had 48 hour records broken, including in Bendigo. You've got Mangalore in Victoria, 137 millimetres. That's a record. Data to 1957 at that site. Then you've got Bendigo, 117. They've got data to 1863. So more than 150 years worth of data. And for October, we've never seen that much rain. Volcanic eruptions have been known to be associated with climate impacts for a very long time. Only 200 years ago, Mount Tambora erupted at a scale that was unprecedented and that far surpassed the magnitude released by the Tongan eruption. This eruption created a living hell on Earth for a few years after it. Around 100,000 people, both near and far from the eruption, would perish as a result of the circumstances that were triggered by this event. Temperatures dropped, crops perished and famines became widespread across the globe. The massive ash cloud that was released by Tambora launched a bombardment of sunlight reflecting aerosols into the stratosphere, which lowered the temperatures of the planet. Every part of the world was affected by this event. But the eruption that occurred in Tonga in January of 2022 was a little different. Unlike Krakatoa or Tambora, it didn't occur in the open air like these two notorious eruptions did. And that's a huge difference. It was primarily a submarine eruption, meaning much of the sunlight reflecting aerosols remained trapped beneath the waves, and this has led to a few different things occurring. Firstly, the sun hasn't really been blocked all that much. Some aerosols definitely would have reached the stratosphere, but in general, most of it remained submerged. But one volatile in particular was released to unprecedented levels, and that's what has created the catalyst for the floods that we would eventually witness in Australia. This volatile was water. Yep, water. When this blast occurred, massive, and I mean massive amounts of water were shot up towards the stratosphere. The ash plume reached 58 kilometers above the surface and penetrated the stratosphere. This is the first time we've witnessed a volcanic eruption penetrating the stratosphere. In fact, the Tongan volcano generated the highest plumes of ash and water ever measured. But before we continue, we first need to touch on the normal factors that contribute to wetter weather in Australia. And these are cyclical and are a natural part of our continent. I'll try to get through this as soon as possible, but trust me, it's worth explaining so that you can understand exactly why this volcanic eruption led to the worst flooding events in recent Australian history. Australia has two circumstances that largely dictate its climate. The first is the La Nina El Nino cycle. We're currently in the middle of a La Nina event in Australia. This climate event brings wetter than usual weather to Australia and is just a normal part of the climate here. The climate of Australia cycles between La Nina and El Nino. Without going too much into it, a La Nina is basically cooler than normal ocean temperatures in the eastern Pacific near the equator, and a El Nino is the opposite with warmer than normal temperatures existing. The second thing that dictates the climate of Australia is the Southern Annular Mode, also known as SAM and this is being directly altered by the volcanic eruption. 
When defined, SAM is a climate driver that can influence rainfall and temperatures in Australia. The SAM refers to a non-seasonal north-south movement of the strong westerly winds that blow almost continuously in the mid to high latitudes of the southern hemisphere. These winds can shift their position and move from north to south depending on a variety of factors that influence this. And this is important because this volcanic eruption has forced the SAM to move and to stay in a southerly position that it normally doesn't remain trapped within for this long, with most SAM events only lasting a fortnight or so, compared to the many months that we've seen this year. The SAM around Australia has three different states that it can enter which create a variety of different weather impacts in Australia. A positive, negative and neutral state. The examples I'm about to give you is of SAM in the winter time. In summer, the effects are different. But since Australia just came out of winter, it's the most relevant for this video. Typically, when Australia is in an active La Nina cycle, the SAM is in a positive state. This means it will remain south beneath Tasmania and the rains associated with it won't really reach southern Australia as much as it normally would. This shift allows tropical air from the Tasman and Coral Sea to move west creating a dry Victoria, but a very wet New South Wales and Queensland, whilst also allowing a larger percentage of the water-saturated wind to move east from the Indian Ocean over Western Australia. A negative SAM is the opposite, it reaches far into the continent, drawing up more wetter and cold weather, but if it moves too far north, then the westerlies blow across the continent, making the western parts of Australia wet and drying it out by the time it approaches the eastern part of the continent meaning little to no rain will be dropped on the east during this event. So it's predominantly the southern annular mode, aka the SAM, that the Tongan volcano has disrupted or amplified as it was already in a positive state because of the La Nina, but it has been amplified by this eruption and I'll explain how in a moment. First, let's take a look at how this happened to begin with. This is Tonga. Here is where the submarine volcano erupted at a magnitude 6 on the volcanic explosivity index. So it released this massive ash plume, which is actually predominantly water, and that's why the colour of it is very white compared to the dark brown or grey to black cloud of ash that most explosive volcanoes release when they erupt on the surface and above the waterline. Now here is a map of the prevailing winds. So when the 58 km high cloud of ash was shot upwards towards the stratosphere, the prevailing winds began to take it in a west to northwest direction and it would travel that way until this little circular current took it south towards southern Australia and the borders of Antarctica, where the massive amount of water vapour would directly contact the southern annular mode. Australia's weather is directly linked to what is going on in the stratosphere over Antarctica and studies have shown that water vapour levels in the southern hemisphere as a whole have increased by 20% following the eruption. And well, you might think that it's this water vapour that's being rained back down onto Australia, but the truth is much more stranger and fascinating, because what much of this water vapour is doing is cooling the stratosphere over Antarctica. Temperatures have dropped by around 1 to 3 degrees here, and this cold air is strengthening the polar vortex. A polar vortex is just basically the winds that are swirling around Antarctica, and SAM is part of these winds. This dramatic cooling and subsequent strengthening of the polar vortex is forcing the southern annular mode, or SAM, to remain stuck unbelievably close to Antarctica, where it is being forced to remain trapped. So the cold temperatures have strengthened the polar vortex, which is forcing the positive SAM to hang very low in its reach, to a point that it's almost hugging Antarctica. As a result of this, we are receiving fewer cold fronts from Antarctica, and because these cold fronts aren't travelling north to northeast from Antarctica over Australia like they normally would, much of what we are receiving in terms of weather events and rain are being sourced from the increased easterly winds that have been allowed to dominate now that the SAM is in a lower position. This means we get fewer cold fronts that normally come from Antarctica, affecting an area that stretches from Brisbane down to Hobart, meaning more onshore winds from the ocean are hitting Australia with wetter weather. Normally the easterly winds would be competing with the southern annular mode, and this struggle or tug of war would lead to the more stable weather that we experience in Australia. And I say stable weather in a somewhat joking way because the weather in Australia is never really stable, but this event has led to an anomaly that just isn't part of the normal cycle of our climate. So the southern annular mode is basically being tied to Antarctica. It's not being allowed to drift further north and for months we've been hammered with extremely strange wetter weather than what most of us have ever experienced. 
The amount of rain has been so bad, the ground is oversaturated to the point it has become like a stagnant rotten swamp. Like literally, my front and rear lawn has begun to smell rotten as much of the oxygen that normal soil would retain became suffocated, turning the ground anoxic, leading to it smelling quite bad. As the soil has basically turned from aerobic to anaerobic, and a foul, rotten, sulfurous smell is emanating from it as a result. So basically, what this means is we still have a few more months of this La Nina cycle. The water vapour released by the Tongan volcanic eruption is still there doing its thing, but in general, we should only have another two or three months of this in Australia before the La Nina cycle begins to taper and before the SAM is finally liberated from the shackles that the eruption has placed it in. In the next six months, the weather should more or less return to a normal state, whatever that means in this country. But this shows just how far reaching these events are. They've caused extreme chaos in Australia, especially in the southeastern parts of it. Victoria had the worst flooding I've ever seen, and I was actually worried I was going to be flooded out too, since I live in an ancient river channel that has been heavily mined in the past. So now you know why Australia is flooding so badly. And we aren't out of the waters yet. I know, bad pun, but the danger is still there. Now that you know the whys, hopefully it'll help you understand the weather conditions that are forming this, and perhaps it might even help to prevent a flooding disaster to you or your property, if you're currently living within one of these parts in Australia that are being drastically affected. I hope that everyone affected by these floods gets back on their feet as soon as possible, and I really feel for the thousands of Australians who lost everything as a result of this. My most heartfelt thoughts go out to you all. And so, this is how the massive volcanic eruption that occurred in Tonga led to some of the worst flooding disasters seen in recent history in Australia. Hopefully something like this doesn't happen again too soon. What's scary is that this eruption was a VEI-6 on the Volcanic Explosivity Index, and Tambora was a VEI-7, an order of magnitude stronger. I can't imagine what would have happened if it was a Tambora event that occurred, but I'm glad it wasn't. Thanks for watching. If you found this video interesting, consider signing up to our Patreon or by joining our YouTube channel, which you can do by clicking the Join button down below. We have a whole heap of great benefits, including a Discord server that I've just opened up. If you'd prefer to make a once-off donation, the link to our PayPal is both in the description and on the screen. Every donation allows me to focus more time on creating these kinds of videos, as this channel is a one-man team that consists of me and me alone. And I really want to spend more time and effort on turning this channel into a trove of knowledge that's presented in a format that is, hopefully, not too dry. At least that's what I strive for. On top of this, if you aren't in a position to financially contribute, I totally understand that. The best way that you can help to support this channel is by liking and sharing our videos around. That in itself is worth its weight in gold. I just wanted to give a big thank you to anyone who's donated to the channel's PayPal, and to anyone who signed up to our Patreon or to our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. And thank you so much to Holly, Melissa, and Hal for becoming our newest YouTube members. And I owe a lot of thanks to Bill, our level two Andesite member. We just opened up a Patreon a few days ago and I just wanted to thank the people who have already signed up for it. It absolutely blew my mind. So thank you so much from the bottom of my heart to Kerry, Cherie, Rock, and to Peter, my first Patreons. I appreciate you all so, so much. Honestly, thank you to everyone who has signed up, donated, or who has just watched the videos. You've turned a little dream of mine that I've had for over a decade into something that is slowly becoming a reality. I'll be back in a few days with another video, and this time we're going to New South Wales and looking at a chain of supervolcanoes that possibly contributed or even caused the worst extinction event in Earth's history, the Great Dying. So I'll see you all real soon.